I'd like to introduce uh, the members of the panel, starting from extreme right and coming towards me. Uh, on the right, you'll have uh, Pritam Singh. He's a member of our Youth Wing EXCO. Thank you. Uh, on his left, Gerald Giam, who is our Assistant Webmaster and a member of the uh, Workers' Party Executive Council. Uh, then we have Mr. Faisal Manap, also a member of our uh, WP Executive Council. <laughs> Next to him, Mr. Peng Eng Huat, who is our Deputy Webmaster and a member of our WP Council as well. <laughs> and finally, Yao Shin Leong, our uh, Organising Secretary and member of the WP Council. Okay, now before all of you get too worried about copying feverishly, I'd like to assure you that we will be giving you some uh, assistance for you to report uh, in a more efficient manner. So uh, at the end of the briefing session, we will hand to you two things. One is a seven-page brief, uh, which summarizes the contents of this launch, both the campaign slogan as well as the key highlights of the manifesto. And secondly, we will also, of course, be giving you a copy of this uh, manifesto. Uh, which we are releasing today. All right, first, what is WP's campaign slogan for the coming GE? We have chosen uh, the following slogan. Vote Workers' Party towards a First World Parliament. Or in Mandarin, Ba Piao Tou Ge Gong Ren Dang Mai Xiang Di Shi Jie Guo Hui. Why have we chosen this slogan? We think it's important in this 46th year of our nation's independence to reflect on where we have come as a nation. And while, of course, Singaporeans can take pride in the advancements we have made in infrastructure, in economic development, we should also ask a very fundamental question about what is the state of our governance in Singapore at this time? Our organs of state, government, parliament and judiciary, in what state of health are they? Are they functioning properly as checks on each other? It, parliament in particular is of concern to us because, as you know, the current composition of parliament in terms of elected MPs consists of 82 from the PAP and 2 from opposition. Is this a healthy state of affairs? If parliament is supposed to perform its function as a robust check on the executive government, can this happen with 82 to 2 in favour of the ruling party? Is there a danger that Parliament will become a rubber stamp of the government agenda in the future if we are not careful? Now, no government is perfect or infallible or lasts forever, and we believe very strongly that it is in the national interest to restore Parliament's role as a robust check to keep the government accountable. And it is our view that the ruling party's MPs cannot fully do this as they have to support the government agenda when voting comes. Now, to explain a little bit more about this concept of first world government, what are the characteristics that we see a first world government, a first world parliament having? And there are four main characteristics of a first world parliament. First, we believe that a first world parliament should only consist of MPs elected in free and fair elections, all having similar voting rights due to the mandate they receive from the people. Second, a First World Parliament will function as a robust check and balance against the government. And in order for them to function as a robust check, there must be a critical mass of elected MPs from other parties besides the ruling party. Third, the opposition as well in a First World Parliament is responsible for defending the national interests. The opposition in Parliament must protect the people and ensure that the government does not take steps that will hurt the people through legislation or other policies. Fourth, it is a Parliament which respects the Constitution and respects people's constitutional rights. What are the benefits of a First World Parliament to Singaporeans? Again, we'd like to highlight four points that we see as benefits of a First World Parliament to Singaporeans. First, a First World Parliament will ensure that there is a thorough examination of policies in the highest forum, and this examination takes place open to public scrutiny. This, we believe, will make the ruling party 
very much more careful when they want to implement policies, especially unpopular policies. Second benefit of a First World Parliament, it will keep the ruling party on its toes through pressure of elected opposition members being present there. And again, they would have to think very carefully about pushing through harsh policies or pay a high political price. Third benefit of a First World Parliament, that it builds insurance against ruling party decline. It enables other parties to build expertise in policy as well as in municipal governance and in, it will assist in building insurance for the Singapore people towards failure of the ruling party in the future. Fourth benefit of First World Parliament, it will ensure better representation of more diverse interests. And in this, I'm highly encouraged by some letters recently in the forum page of the Straits Times, which shows that Singaporeans do understand the need for more diverse representation through other parties besides the ruling party. Next, I'd like to just give a brief overview of the manifesto before I call upon uh, various panellists to highlight certain chapters. Now, this manifesto, which we are going to uh, release today, it will update our policy ideas since 2006. And it covers 15 areas of public policy. But overarching all these areas are our fundamental and underlying philosophy of governance. And we still believe what we've believed for many, many years in the values of diversity, respect, human dignity, tolerance, and equal responsibility.